Hi everyone, welcome back to today's video. For today, we're gonna to be making a super, super cute card using and featuring the Whale Done um, stamp set as well as the Whale of a Time designer series paper. I have had this for a very long time and I have not used it and I am so sad that I have, I'm have. i just now getting around to using it because this little suite is absolutely adorable and so, so, so much fun to work with. So hope you're excited for today. Before we jump into today's video, I just wanted to remind you about um, all of the socials, Instagram, Facebook, all of that good stuff. Um, make sure you are following me over there so you can see all of the fun stuff I have going on. And also make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel so you get notified as soon as I release a new video. Um, and always, as always, all of the products that I'm going to be talking to you guys about in today's video can be purchased just by going to littlemooncreation.stampinup.net. So... With all that out of the way, let's jump into making today's project. So, super, super, super cute little card. Um, this is something you could give to really anybody. I did it more of like a masculine, because a uh, masculine type card and colors, because I feel like I haven't had too many masculine things um, recently, and I just wanted to add to that my collection. But I feel like you could give this to um, a child for a birthday or something, or just to say I love you. Um, but you could also give this to an adult of like, hey, you know, an adult that's um, into sea animals or sea or whatever you know what I mean um you could absolutely give this to an adult as well so I definitely don't think that it's just for children um so let's jump in to start making this so I have the six by six piece of designer series paper here again this is from the whale of a time um uh designer series paper stack um and I wanted to I have to grab my trimmer I forgot I wanted to um, show you guys how I cut this down to get the look that I wanted on my um, on my card. So, oops, I'm going to go ahead. I grabbed my trimmer and I'm going to try to open this. So I want as much of this in the um, on my final piece as possible. So my piece I'm going to cut down to three and three quarters by five inches. So I'm going to do the three and three quarters first and I really like I said I really want all of the turtles and stuff in my piece so and I want it kind of on this downward side so I am cutting and I'm getting this portion in here so this right here is going to be three and three quarters so I'm going to trim that and then again you can see there's a lot of blue space up here so I want to trim this side off when I trim this down to five inches because that's not the I don't want this blue stuff I don't want the blue I want to have the really big focal be all these little turtles and they're kind of swimming downwards which I just think is absolutely adorable so that's how I cut that paper super easy but I just wanted to kind of talk you guys through my mindset and what um what that looks like for me as I am um cutting down a piece of paper and how I kind of know what to cut and where I want to cut so that's one piece so I'm going to set that off to the side um let's go ahead and do our stamping so I have just a scrap of whisper white here I'm going to be using my bumblebee ink pad oh and you know what I think I forgot to grab one of the stamps I did I did so there's this little tiny heart in this stamp set that I need to grab There we go. Along with the sentiment here that says, my love for you is bigger than the ocean. I just think that's adorable. So I am going to take my sentiment in my bumblebee ink. I love bumblebee. I like, I never thought that I would be so in love with like a yellow color before, but I totally am. It's like kind of an obsession. So I'm just going to stamp this. Again, this is just a scrap of Whisper White that I had large enough to use our, um, tag punch here and now I can't remember the name of this punch I can't remember what the name of this punch is but I'm we're using this really nice little tag punch here um so just a piece large enough to do your sentiment and to cut it out and then I'm going to take just a little heart and you don't have to do this but I'm going to put it right there I think it just helps kind of fill out the piece and you'll kind of see that once we cut it um it needed in my opinion it needed a little something extra so that is all the stamping we're going to do. I am now going to take my punch here and I'm going to punch out my sentiment just like that. 
super stinking cute. And while I have my punch, I'm going to take this other piece of the designer series paper. Now this is just a scrap and I'm gonna be using this blue side and I'm gonna go ahead and punch two of these out. So again, you really just need a scrap for that. And you can see what I did here is I actually kind of framed my sentiment. I think it just helps make it um, pop up off the background and really kind of help um, give a fun look to it. So to go ahead and build that piece, I'm going to take my sentiment here and I flipped it over. And I'm just going to put a bunch of adhesive on the back. Just like that. And then I'm going to take these other the pieces that I just cut out of the designer series paper. And I'm gonna say that's about a quarter of an inch there. So I'm gonna do a quarter of an inch, stick that down, and I'm actually gonna flip this over and I'm gonna put more adhesive on the back. And this time I'm really putting the adhesive on the back of the designer series paper piece that I just stuck down, right? And then I'm going to line this other one up. And this time you're really just trying to get them to be symmetrical. So I just try to kind of line up however thick this bottom piece was to how um, to where I want that piece. And then stick that down. And it's just a simple, simple, simple way to frame your little sentiment a little bit more to help make it pop and kind of stand out amongst this semi-busy background, right? So now what we are going to do is let's start to assemble our card. So I have this piece of Whisper White here and this is cut at, what is this cut at? Um, four inches by five and a quarter. So I'm gonna take my piece of designer series paper and I'm going to put this down onto my piece of Whisper White. And this is just gonna frame our piece of designer series paper. Um, again, framing and doing like layers and things just kind of adds, um, it just adds to your card. It just makes it look um, a little bit, I don't wanna say nicer, cause it's not necessarily nicer. It just helps frame pieces and helps um, pieces stand out and whatnot. So I like to like, if I ever feel like I wanna add a little bit of brightness to a project, I will go and I'll grab a piece of Whisper White cardstock and I'll use that as a frame because you can see when I set this down, it just very nicely adds a little bit of something extra to this card um, and it kind of brightens up the entire background because we have that little bit of white there it just it's just some of those little techniques that you learn over time um and yeah so trying to oh look look of course this happens every time well i'm going to show you guys how easy it is to refill your um stamp and seal um but yeah, I just wanted to kind of talk to you guys a little bit more about some of like my thought process and like kind of what goes on in my head when I design. Um, little things like that is exactly what goes through my head. <laughs> so super stinking easy to refill your stamp and seal. If you don't put the uh, thing in adhesive, that would be smart. Oops. You just take it and you slide the little refill into the holes and then put the other side on. Now we should be rocking and rolling again. Just like that, see? Okay, and now make sure I face it the right way. <laughs> I'm gonna put this onto my card base. This is Pacific Point cardstock. Um, and all of the supplies that I used, all of the dimensions for the paper and everything are always in the coordinating blog post, which is the link in the description box below. Um, so in case I forget to say like the exact size of something or the exact cardstock or whatever, you can always find that stuff in the description box in case you need it. Um, or in the blog post, which is in the description. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna take my little um, sentiment here and I'm gonna grab some dimensionals. And I'm going to put this up on dimensionals. I'm gonna use quite a few so that it doesn't sag in any places. Do, do, do. You guys know I go dimensional crazy, but I just I wanna make sure that my piece is gonna stay and look exactly how I want it to. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna put this over here in like the lower right hand corner. Um, I am going to line up this edge here. 
with the edge of this designer series paper so that it just kind of looks really nice and uh, seamless. I just think it looks really pretty if you do it that way. Line it up so that it's straight. Super cute. So you could absolutely stop here. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous card you could give to anybody. I, You could absolutely stop here. If you want to take it up one notch and just kind of go to a, the next level with it, I have the Whale of a Time sequins here, and I am just going to take a few of these and I'm going to shake it into my lid. I'm going to grab my Take Your Pick tool. I'm also going to grab the little putty end of it, as well as my fine tip glue pen. I'm going to zoom in here a bit so hopefully you guys can see a little bit better and I'm going to just add some sequins to my card honestly it just kind of plays it up oops things are falling it just adds a fun extra little dimension that I really really like um so yeah I don't know I just think it's fun it's fun to do and it I just really like the way that it looks so again you could leave the card just like this you don't have to do this step but I really like the extra um, fun added elements that it adds to this one so I'm going to not I'm not going to go crazy I'm just going to do a few around so I want one down here one up here one like over here and I normally do them um, um, in like threes so I will go and I'll add three so um, I'm using my putty tool to pick up the sequins I talked about this in my favorite tools video I don't keep the putty tip in my take your pick tool I use them as two separate tools but I do use them together so I'm left-handed so I have my putty tool in my left hand and I have my um, pick tool in my right hand I picked up the sequin with my left hand and now I'm just going to go stick it in the glue and I'm going to use my pick tool in my right hand to help um, get the sequin to stay in the glue. Super, super easy to do. Um, I really like this sequin pack also because it has such fun colors in here. They're really, really, really beautiful. There's just tons and tons and tons of different options to choose from and I kind of just shake it around in the lid until I see which one I want to grab. And then again, I'm just using the putty tool to bring it to the glue and using the pick tool to keep it in the glue, just like that. Then I'm gonna go back and grab my fine tip glue pen again, and I'm gonna add, I think like five more. I always like to add in odd numbers. I think um, odd numbers are more appealing to the eye. Well, I don't think that that's just like a thing that odd numbers are more appealing to the eye. So I always like to try to add in um, odd numbers. And this is a pretty big space. So five seems like the right number for me to add. So I'm going to go in here again and just find my sequins. Just like so. Okay, hopefully the barking is over. Um, sometimes you'll get a sequin that's kind of like weird on the back. I found that a few times um, while I was making the other one. And so just find another one. If it doesn't feel like it's laying very nicely to you, don't force it, just move on to the next. I'm gonna do one of these up here. And again, it's all about just kind of playing with it, seeing what you like, seeing what works. Um, if you feel like you don't want to put all of your glue down all at once, don't. Work at whatever pace you want to work at. Um, it's totally, totally, totally 110% up to you. So you do what you feel most comfortable with. We'll use this one. Put that one down there. And then I think I want a little, there we go. Just like that. Awesome. So, so, so stinking cute. And it see how it just kind of adds something extra to the blue space in here. It just adds a little bit um, of texture, I think, to it, which is what I really, really like. Um, the fine tip glue pen does take a little bit longer to dry than, say, using um, your stamp and seal and whatnot. But stamp and seal really isn't the right product to use, the right adhesive to use with something like this. But that is our card for today. So I really, really, really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I love it. It was so easy to do. So, so, so stinking simple. And you could use this for a hundred different occasions. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, you can find all of these products, purchase them 24 seven, just by going to littlemooncreation.stampinup.net. As I was saying, all of the specifics on the products that I used, paper sizes, all of that good stuff is in the coordinating blog post, which is the first link in the description. Or you can go to Little Moon Creation, which is just my website, and see all kinds of fun stuff there. So I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!